Hello, welcome to episode five of Your Brain. And this week I'm going to be talking about how it learns. Over the previous weeks, I've been going through um, things like the unconscious and the conscious mind, those two parts of mind that are primarily discussed. The conscious mind being this prefrontal cortex um, in the moment thinking and the unconscious mind, which is everything else that includes all your um, emotions, bodily functions, experiences, memories, and etc. I've also talked about three key stages of development, starting from that um, zero um, age when you're first born, all the way up to about 24, 25, and what happens afterwards. Today, though, I want to talk to you about how that brain learns. I think it's really important to understand that so that you can understand why you might not be quite where you want to be now. So I'm going to use a phobia as an example, just because um, they that's the worst type of learning that you can have. Well, not the worst, but it's not a good one, is it? So every time your brain experiences something from those early learnings, but actually going all the way through to your about 24, 25, you're constantly learning stuff. And the way the brain learns is to take data in from its environment. That data comes from your five senses. So your sight, the ears, the taste, the smell, and your feeling sense. And arguably for those of you who are that way inclined, your intuitive, instinctive sense. And it takes that data in and it works out whether you survived it or not, in blunt terms. So you have an experience, and then what it does is it applies a biochemical marker to it. This biochemical marker is the thing that tells the body what to do. If it's a good thing, you will get some emotional response that's happiness or something else, but it knows that that's okay. But what if it's not? So for example, the first time you come across something that's scary, and I'm gonna use spiders here. So if you're not keen on spiders, please just bear with me because what we're looking at is how the brain treats it. Somebody in your vicinity possibly screamed, ran out the room, leapt about, who knows? Oh, it might have been something completely unrelated. And the unconscious mind has looked around to say, what was that? What, what, what's causing me a problem? And it might have settled on the spider. So the spider may never have been it. But it's the spider that the unconscious comes across and thinks, oh, that doesn't look good. That's not safe applies the biochemical marker of run. The biochemical marker is an emotion. And that emotion, that biochemical marker, is the way that the unconscious mind can get us to react to our surroundings faster than that. It's why sometimes people can trigger each other because something at a deeper level is seeing that interaction as a threat. What happens is most things, if you only see them once or twice or just a few occasions, it's a problem, but not a big problem. It's not one that's insurmountable. Other learnings will possibly take it over. However, what if it's a big learning, what we, we in the trade called significant emotional event, or it's a consistent something. And we'll cover that another time. But what happens is the information comes in through the five senses. The brain says, we've seen that. This is what we did last time. Do that again. And if it keeps going on, it becomes compounded until eventually, in the case of this spider, it becomes a phobia. Does that make sense? And I think it's really important if we can use that analogy of a phobia and how one develops, that is how our brain is learning all the time. The good stuff, 
remains good stuff and it will tr trigger off feel good feelings and that's brilliant. But if it, for whatever reason it's learning that you are unsafe, insecure, unloved, that you cannot be trusted or you know believed, you are learning in the wrong way for you. Because these are all about what other people think of you, not what you think of yourself. Your brain has started to protect you in the only way it can, using these biochemical responses. Over time, it may be that you learn new ways of being and then you're all right. And it's only the odd trigger that will set it off. So, for example, maybe um, you do not like being um, uh, center of attention. On the whole, you've managed to keep yourself very much out of center of attention. But every so often, life will throw something at you where you are center of attention. A birthday party, a wedding, a speech, a presentation, who knows? And then that old learning is tapped into and bam, before you've even been able to think about it, you've been sabotaged. And this is why anxiety, stress and many other results that we get in today's world in our own lives are a problem because of those early learnings. Something that said you weren't safe at the time and your brain learned something. But it's sort of faulty, isn't it? Because it might have been right for right then, but it's not right for right now because you're older, wiser, more experienced. Um, just as I wrap this up, I want you to understand that not only is there a biochemical response, which is much faster than your thinking mind, I have to say. Those biological responses are being fed back to your brain, your conscious brain, and can actually influence your thinking. That's for another day. Hope that's been useful. Do, do join me next week as I look at some other faulty ways that your brain may have learned things that are really not right for you. Thank you. See you next week.